Um, hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming here. Uh, I will talk about this topic about fighting against chaotically separated bodies within bulk. So, okay. So first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sada Yuki Furuhashi. Uh, people call me Sada. And um, I was originally in, born in Japan and moved to the US four years ago and founded a company called Toja Data. Toja Data? And that is located in Silicon Valley. So I'm uh, one of the three co-founders of that company. And I'm also an uh, open source hacker and I created several projects. One of them is called this Trendy. This is a low collection tool like Syslog but collects data in structured format, which is JSON. Um, how many of you know about Flendy? Do you know about Flendy? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's very good time for you to introduce you about this. Then, uh, another thing is in bulk. I will talk about this today. This is more like for structured data for batch-oriented data collection. And another project is called Message Back. This is, uh, this is like JSON serialization format, but because it's binary based, it's faster and more small. Do you know about this message back project ever? Oh, some of you. Okay, great, thank you. So please check this out. So today's talk is this about Embark. So what's Embark? Embark is an open source tool to load data in parallel. So loading data means uh, moving data records from A to B. A can be like storage, uh, web services, or NoSQL databases. And B also can be storage databases or like services. The point is to use plugins so that you can plug in the source or destinations so that you can support more variety of the storages. <coughs> and then uh, the goal is to make data loading easy. And that was very painful before. So the reason why it's painful is this. So for example, you have 10 gigabytes of CSV file. You want to load that to PostgreSQL. Well, in our company, Toria Data, this always happens. People import data, people import gigabytes of data every day. And uh, they want to analyze the data. But there is a problem. So first, you run a script to load data to PostgreSQL, but probably, it fails. That's because there are broken reports and the timestamp format is not expected or there are some uh, unexpected <coughs> values. So one example is that one tool supports uh, this time format but does not support this time format, which is this case, ISO format. Then some tool generates CSV file with no is this batch of n. But some tool doesn't recognize it, it is a null. So we need a normalization to convert those data. They run again, and it probably fails again because of another problem. For example, uh, in, nine, in, in later record, you found inf as a data, but we want to convert it to infinity so that it can be a float value infinity. Then fix it, retry, fix it, retry. You need to retry again and again. Then uh, maybe you find that, oh, some data are loaded twice accidentally. So it's so painful. Okay, then, anyway, we succeeded to set up a script today. Then you register the script to Chrome so that it uh, loads data every day or every hour. One day, it was some somehow failed with another problem. For example, like, the file includes invalid UTFS code and the script just stopped and the data was not there in PostgreSQL. So you don't have to think about this. I mean, what we want to do is just data loaded there. But actually, because of the data format, this problem happens. So we want to avoid it. Another problem is this. Uh, let's say you have 10 gigabytes of file for 700 uh, files. Many, many files, large, large, uh, large files. Then uh, oftentimes scripts are slow because you don't, have, you don't want to spend time to optimize the scripts. But 
with a naive way, if one file takes one hour, it will take one month to load everything. <laughs> it never finishes. Uh, <coughs> so it's also a big pain. And there are a lot of uh, data formats in the world. One is XML, one is JSON, uh, but low format. Or like there are several uh, scientific data formats like HD, F5, PDE, second file. And there are also some many storage resolution tree. <coughs> so MongoDB, Elasticsearch, Redshift, they just uh, get introduced recently. Uh, but you don't want to rewrite the scripts every time when you add new strategies. <laughs> so the problem is the difficult to parse files correctly. And the even CSV file has many variable kinds of formats. And error handling is difficult. And <laughs> transactional load, or like item potent retrying, is hard to implement. But without that, you might import data twice, deprecated accidentally. And hard to optimize per, uh, performance. And there are many formats in the world and the storage is in the world. <coughs> and as a company, so we provide uh, cloud-based data management service. So you import data, you can query at the end state using SQL, or apply machine learning on that. And we push the results back to your system. So that's a system we uh, provide as a company. And what we found is that customers want to try to read data quickly, but because of the data format problems, storage format problems, uh, they took time to import data. And we need to write scripts for them every time, every time. But it's hard work. We don't want to do that. And one tool, friendly. Uh, solved the streaming data collection. This is another open source project that I started. Uh, this is used a lot, especially in Japan, actually. Uh, big companies like Nintendo, like uh, Google Cloud Platform internally uses Friendly, or uh, Amazon Elastic, uh, Amazon's web services also use Friendly. But this tool is for streaming data collection. But we also need batch-oriented data collection, like one time 10 gigabytes loaded to the somewhere. So that's different problems. So a solution is this, Embark. So again, Embark is a open source project, uh, plugin-based power data loader. That makes data loading easy, a lot of easy. This plugin-based, this is very important. So let's, uh, yeah. And plugin-based means that uh, input, the uh, data sources and data uh, destinations are pluggable. Uh, you can add plugins or download uh, released plugins, open source product plugins from the web. Then, uh, <coughs> so those plugins support several kinds of uh, uh, data inputs. And then Embark itself is a framework. It's a reliable framework which takes care of the retrying or connection between uh, the, the plugins or transactions or parallel executions. Plugins don't have to think about that because Embark as a framework provides that. So let's check a demo. Like demo. Okay. So. So suppose there's Embark already installed, then uh, Embark, that's a bit easy. Yes. Uh, this command, Embark example, generates a sample configuration for you. Embark example demo. Then it generated those files. Then let's see, this is the, this file. So this is very typical CSV file, uh, compressed in this format. And then it also generates a configuration file, which includes path to uh, this file. Then you run embark yes. Oh. Yes, embark yes. 
This command reads some contents from the file and gets it the format and generates appropriate configuration file for you. So this time, this CSV file has comma delimited and quoting the character is double quotation. And the first line is a column names. And there are the column names. Uh, first column is ID, tag is integer, bound type. And time is like this. Timestamp with format is also just. <laughs> then there are two time columns, right? One has time and two is time purchase. And different time formats. Uh, time formats. This means that in bulk just this timestamp format and this timestamp format. This is actually timestamp 2015, uh, yeah, June 27th. So writing this configuration appropriately is uh, hard because you often miss some configurations. But in bulk, yes is for you so that you can start from here. Then next you will run in bulk preview. This commands with some data and provides you how that will be read. So this time, uh, this is like this. And then, if you think this is okay, run ML run. Then it actually loads data. Yes, like this. So this time, uh, no, no, this is not. Uh, as an output, I used a plugin called standard out. So it just dumps everything to the console. But this is plugin based again. So you can use other plugins like PostgreSQL plugin. So let's use this. So I said type PostgreSQL. The host is here. And invoke from. Yes, so it outputs it, uh, a lot of messages. That's because uh, this is parallelized and optimized internally. Then you can find those data in this table. Oh, it's, yeah. Then <coughs> the com type is also uh, set up correctly. Those two time counts are loaded successfully. And, uh, <coughs> This CSV file could be more complicated. For example, um, let's say, usually CSV files have this quoting rule, but often cases, some CSV file this has this escaping. And um, oftentimes CSV file comments like this, created by Sada. Or there are some comments. Here is a comment. Well, yeah, this happens. And this, like this. <laughs> <laughs> this always happens. So, but even in this case, Embark can guess the file format for you. Yes, like this. So, escape is that slash, and no character is that slash n. And short is the mark of the comments. Then embark run will load the data correctly. Uh, I should say embark preview. Yeah, so data is no here, and the coding is successfully parsed. And or and if data includes broken data like this garbage. Embark automatically detects it and skips that instead of just making them failed. Yeah, skip, skip this line. What you want to do is load most of the data successfully and uh, put the broken records aside so that you can take care of that uh, later. So Embark uh, handles those problems. <coughs> okay. So. So this is Embark's plugin architecture. So Embark itself is a small uh, framework. And most of the features are implemented as plugins. So one is input plugin, and one is output plugin. 
And there are also filter plugins which converts data format, ah, sorry, yeah, which converts the data structure or skip uh, records or skip counts. And there is also uh, guess plugins which provides guessing of the file and generates configuration file. And within this input plugin, this is also uh, se separated. Uh, one, if the data input is uh, record based, such as possible scale of MySQL, that is just input records. But oftentimes you have file based inputs like CSV file. Then in this case, uh, plugin is also divided into three uh, types internally. One is file input. This is like local file, Amazon S3, YHTP, uh, FTP. It, those plugins read data, just read data. And the next step is to decode it, like decompressing it uh, using ZZIP or other compression formats. Then the final step is to parse the format, like CSV parser, JSON parser, or other uh, formats. Output is also uh, output is the same. It internally has formatter to format the file format, and then uh, compress or encrypt it. Then write the data, the, write the actual files to something. And this is example of uh, input plugins. So possible scale MySQL or Vertica like this. So they are all uh, released as plugins on the web. So I think you can find uh, most of them. And uh, files are there. And Parser also has many supports on the web. So they are open source plugin projects. A uh, good thing of pr uh, plugins is that, um, and open source, is that um, uh, you don't have to write everything from scratch. You can copy from those plugins and create your own. Or if you find a small problem, you can contribute to those projects as a pull request. Then uh, those small efforts pile up, then uh, other users can t uh, take advantage of your efforts. The output is also the same. Uh, Possibly scan my CPU. Yes. And funny thing is that someone said I want to put the data to Excel file, and he created a plugin. Then actually it's used a lot. <laughs> and there are filter plugins which uh, tr uh, converts the, uh, the, the records. Why is to filter comes out? They say like if the data input includes password count, you want to remove it before uh, inputting, uh, putting them to uh, cloud services. Well, like, if a column includes JSON, you want to flatten them into columns. Or uh, converting user agent field, like Firefox something version, to browser names, OS name, etc. That is also implemented as a filter plugin. Or converting query string, like question, key value, key value, key value, to columns. This is very useful when you have a big access log data, and then uh, uh, flatten them into fields before routing them to databases. One other useful feature is uh, hashing filter plugin. With this, uh, with this plugin, uh, you can hash, let's say, like user name before importing them to a database so that uh, you can <laughs> encrypt the data and you, uh, no one can re uh, re uh, recover it back to the original data for security, but still you can match the data across uh, different sources. The one actual use case is like this. You use a bulk PostgreSQL plugin. I created it. And use another filter plugin, uh, com filter, so remove some comps. This is created by another person. And apply encrypt filter so that you can encrypt the user ID, user name, or those uh, sensitive information. Then put them to Elasticsearch using Embalk Elasticsearch, which is written by another person. Then, use case two is loading a lot of CSV files stored on Amazon S3 to cloud-based data analytics services. Um, <coughs> yeah, cloud-based analytics is something like Trojan Data, we, or like BigQuery, Google BigQuery, or Amazon Redshift. You can involve to load data from S3 to those services. Then, uh, an interesting plugin is called this executor plugin. 
So, so Mbok itself actually does not execute plugins. Mbok calls executor plugin to execute plugins. So this is a sort of meta execution plugin. And using this Mbok executor map produce plugin, uh, this plugin distributes the tasks across distributed machines. Then uh, load huge data using those distributed machines in parallel. So using this, uh, you can load like, hundreds of gigabytes data quickly. The, as a service, we also provide in bulk of service so that we can call REST API to run in bulk. And then in bulk runs to load data from your databases or uh, process data and re push the results back to your database through in bulk. So maybe internal architecture is a bit complicated, so um, yeah, I think this is good. A plugin implements transaction and task. A transaction is uh, the entire control of the one, one bulk data loading. So it has begin and count. Then at the begin step, plugin creates tasks. Then in bulk, take it and run them in parallel. Then once everything completed successfully, the commit stage is called. Then this commit stage uh, actually commits the data to the storage. So with this common API, you can create uh, any kinds of plugins. If one plugin fails, uh, commit is not called. Instead, cleanup or, uh, yeah, cleanup, yeah. Cleanup method is called. And um, so those tasks are executed in parallel. By default, Embark uses a plugin called Embark Execute a Local Thread. It uses multiple threads to run tasks in parallel. Then tasks are in queue so that threads can take those tasks and run in threads. Then uh, MapRis Executor uses MapRis here which is distributed computing instead of threads. <coughs> MapReduce Executor also supports partitioning. Let's say you want to load data, uh, you want to partition data per hour before loading them to HDFS. In this case, uh, this Embark Executor MapReduce takes care of it. So you can sort data by time and separate files for each hour so that uh, you can skip unnecessary files when you analyze the data. <laughs> so, the first release was uh, 2015, February, 0. version of 0. 0.3. Uh, I added resuming functionality there. It means that uh, when a single task or a single task failed out of many tasks, uh, you don't want to retry from zero. Instead, you want to resume. So Embark uh, support, uh, I had support for that at the first release. And <laughs> at the point four, I had a plugin template generator, which means that uh, Embark new and name will generate a template to develop a plugin. It's actually already working plugin so that you can modify the template to create a new plugin instead of writing from zero, nothing. So it's easier to write. I also added incremental data loading. This means that uh, you run command first, then next run, you load new data only, so that you can schedule it to sync data from one data source to other, other destinations. <coughs> and um, yes, this liquid template engine is added at 0.6. Uh, which is that, like this. In YAML file, configuration file, you can include those parameters so that you can reuse one single file, but ingest, uh, input different variables from the environment variables. So this is useful to reuse the configurations for many use cases. <coughs> and 0 0.8, I added JSON count type, which means that a count can have JSON as a schema as data. It's, it's similar to possible skills, JSON type support. 
Then in the future, I'm going to add some more, like error handling plugins. Currently, uh, when error happens, it skips our code. But it's not always desired behavior. I want to make it customizable. So the idea I have is to provide a new plugin type called error plugin. Unexpected error plugin is that uh, not send a notification email if it finds an error or sends a message to chat or like if the error ratio exceeds 0 0.6 it fails otherwise uh, put the data to another file so those customizations should be possible at the next release yes so and there are some interesting hacks uh, but Rather, I think I should accept some questions. So please ask those things if you are interested in. Okay, thank you very much. So do you have some questions? Yes. So ML guess will generate like a table schema, yes. right? What would it take, like if you already defined your table schema using like JSON table schema or mm -hmm. in the web, like how could, what would it take for Envolve to use that kind of schema? I see, I see. So the question is how to reuse that existing schema. Um, if the data source is schema full database, such as MySQL or PostgreSQL, you don't have to put uh, schema on the configuration file because it's already schema full. Instead, if that is not schema full, like CSV, JSON, uh, Mongolia, uh, <coughs> and what requires the, the, those schema. Mm -hmm. And Envelope doesn't have support, uh, good support for reusing existing template and schema languages. So some people created a tool to convert those schema to YAML file, Envelope and configuration file. The backend to read Excel files already? Or the backend to read Excel files? There was one to write Excel files? But yes, write Excel. Uh, read ex yeah. Excel file. Good question. So there's a website called <laughs> Embark Plugins. Here's a list of plugins. And let's say Excel. Uh, yes. Yes. This plugin reads Excel file. Um, you mentioned item currency. Is that a guarantee across all the data different like source of error and like destinations for the data? Good point. So ID potency is guaranteed within a single uh, output. So for example, if that is a database, it actually runs the commit to guarantee the item potency. But it's, it doesn't guarantee the item potency between input and the output. If you change state of the input as well, it's not totally guaranteed, but most likely it works. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much.